Marshawn Lynch was one of the most feared running backs to ever play in the NFL. His relentless running style earned him the nickname of Beast Mode, and his off-field antics only added to his popularity. Y'all want to try again, huh? So y'all going to try again? That's what we're going to do. We're going to try one more time. I'm thankful. Talk about your performance in the second half of the big run. I'm thankful. What was the song of the day on the way to the game, Marshawn? I'm thankful. Two literal earth-moving touchdowns, this is the story of one of the best running backs to play the game. Marshawn Lynch was born in Oakland, where he grew up with three siblings. For most of his childhood, Marshawn was raised only by his mother, Delisa, due to his father serving a 24-year prison sentence for burglary. I'm gonna take you over here to, uh, to your dad's house. Then when I get there, my dad like, oh, okay, I'll be right back. And then you don't see that you don't see this guy for like <laughs> two days or something. And then after a while, you just you build up numb feelings to that. So you start to expect like the worst out of people. The early years were tough for the Lynch family, but they ended up producing one of the greatest running backs of all time. That they weren't allowed to go outside of the gate. I'll just put it like that. We lived in, a, in apartments where they had a front gate and a back gate, and they were not allowed outside of either one. Marshawn followed in his mother's footsteps by attending Oakland Technical School, where he thrived as a four-sport athlete. He was a talented wrestler and basketball player, as well as being a lightning-quick track athlete. Marshawn's mom once held a school record for the 200 meters, and he came close to setting some records of his own by posting a 10-second 100-meter dash. It was football, though, where he really shone through. In his senior season, Lynch topped 2,000 yards and scored 33 touchdowns with 375 yards and 10 of those touchdowns coming in two postseason games. Signs of a big game player were already emerging. Lynch was recognized as a Super Prep All-American and voted the San Francisco East Bay Player of the Year. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, ranked as the second best running back available behind only Adrian Peterson. And because of this, he was offered by the biggest teams from the Pac-10 at the time. He ultimately decided just to stay in California though and head to Cal Berkeley, a decision that allowed him to play alongside his cousins at that school. Now lining up for the Golden Bears, Marshawn Lynch quickly became a hero. As a freshman, Lynch was more of a backup, but that didn't stop him from making an immediate impact. In his debut, the running back took seven carries for 92 yards and a touchdown, averaging a very useful 13.1 yards per carry. He finished up with 628 yards and eight touchdowns, averaging an incredible 8.8 .8 yards per carry as a freshman. The Golden Bears had themselves a play. 1,246 yards and 10 touchdowns followed in his sophomore season, culminating in a bowl game MVP performance against BYU. Lynch's 194 yards and three touchdowns made him the clear-cut MVP of the game, setting up a junior season that was the best of the lot. In his final year at college, Lynch averaged 6.1 yards per carry, producing 1,356 yards and 11 touchdowns. Not only that, but he was also a factor in the receiving game, adding 34 receptions for 328 more yards and four more scores. He led this team to a 10 and three record, which saw them reach a high point of an eighth place rating. I mean, this season featured plenty of highlights for Lynch, but I think his biggest one that we all know of came against Washington. After hammering the Huskies for 150 yards and two touchdowns, including the winning score in overtime, Lynch grabbed an injury cart and free wheeled around the field in celebration. Across the field. <laughs> It's Marshawn Lynch, not Desmond Bishop. Two number tens on this Cal team. <laughs> it was the ultimate celebration, making him an even more popular figure in California. In the last game of the season, Lynch put up another 100 yard multiple touchdown game against Texas A&M. The win gave the Golden Bears their second bowl game win in as many years, also giving Lynch a share of the MVP award for the second consecutive year. He had turned up in a big game yet again, continuing a trend that would pay off big in the pro game. His incredible junior season brought him first team All-American recognition and the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year award. After deciding to forego his final year at college, 
Lynch finished up with 3,230 rushing yards and 29 touchdowns, along with 600 receiving yards and six more scores. His rushing yardage totals still land him second on the school's all-time leaderboard, and he currently holds the record for most 100-yard rushing games. This impressive resume helped get him selected with the 12th overall pick in the 2007 NFL Draft by the Buffalo Bills. His first ever taste of the NFL came against Denver, in a game where Lynch took 19 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. And I mean, look, a healthy 4.7 yards a carry is a pretty good way to start, but he had to wait until week nine to properly break out into the NFL. And in this game, he proved pivotal in beating the Cincinnati Bengals. Lynch pounded the rock 29 times in the game, converting that into 153 yards and a touchdown. His relentless effort in physical running style helped keep the Bengals off the field and proved that Marshawn could already put a team on his back and grind out a win. This is a characteristic that would appear a lot throughout his career. The Buffalo Bills certainly look to have made the right first round draft selection as Lynch made the all-rookie team with over 1,000 yards in seven touchdowns. He backed this up in fine fashion by recording another 1,000 yard season as a sophomore in 2008. This time, he punched in eight touchdowns and added 300 yards through the air, which was good enough to earn him his first Pro Bowl selection. Like, I mean, after just two years, Lynch already had a reputation for being feared in the NFL. He was a tackle breaking machine and had the agility to match it. It was a three down skill set, honestly, that made him one of the most dangerous players in the NFL at that time. Like, I mean, the dude was set on a trajectory of dominance, but his career took a little detour in 2009. Prior to the season, Lynch was arrested for illegal possession of a firearm, which was found in his car. As a result, he was suspended for three games, which unfortunately led to the end of his time in Buffalo. After missing three games, Lynch struggled to make an impact and was eventually re-signed to backup duties, with Fred Jackson capitalizing on the opportunity to post his first 1,000-yard season. That year, Lynch could only muster up 3.8 yards per carry in 2009, registering more fumbles than touchdowns. And looking back on it, I mean, it was just a tough pill to swallow with his time ending in Buffalo. And honestly, without the arrest, it's hard to argue that he could have built a Hall of Fame career with the Buffalo Bills if he had stayed there. Instead, the former 12th overall pick was traded to the Seahawks after just a few games of the 2010 season. Thankfully, there was still plenty to celebrate down the line. With his career hanging in the balance, he had to rebuild his career in a new city. The Seattle Seahawks were in their first year with new head coach Pete Carroll, and Lynch gave him a physical presence at the running back position. It was a steady start for Marshawn in Seattle. He failed to pass 100 yards in the regular season, but did show some sparks throughout the year. His 83 yards and three touchdowns against Carolina were a highlight before the wildcard round provided him the platform to unleash one of the most iconic plays in NFL history beast mode and no play epitomized that more than this one. The play itself earned the nickname of Beastquake based on the fact that the Seattle Seahawks fans celebrations triggered a magnitude 2 earthquake. It still stands as one of the greatest plays the NFL has ever seen and it kickstarted a resurgence in form of Marshawn Lynch. He then went on to post four consecutive 1,000 yard seasons between 2011 and 2014. The Beastquake play had revitalized beast mode in turned him into one of the most feared running backs in the league. After posting 1,204 yards and 12 touchdowns in 2011, Lynch hit his career best 1,590 yards and 11 touchdowns in 2012. He crossed the 100 yard mark in 10 games that year and earned a first team all pro selection for his efforts, but the biggest prize came one year later. Fresh off of a career best single season yardage total and with the legendary Legion of Boom defense alongside of him, Lynch helped the Seahawks secure a 13 and three record in 2013. And honestly, this provided them a perfect foundation to make a deep playoff run and that's exactly what they did. Lynch was relentless in the first two rounds of the playoffs, converting 28 carries into 140 yards and two touchdowns against New Orleans before posting another 100 yard one touchdown game against San Francisco in the NFC Championship game. Lynch had a track record of always putting up big totals in the most important of games, and in 2013, he had an elite defense that was doing the same. The Legion of Boom gave opposing offenses very little room to maneuver. It was Richard Sherman and Malcolm Smith who produced the game-winning play in the dying moments of the NFC Championship game that year, and it was their elite defensive unit that won them the grand prize 
two weeks later. Going up against the best offense in the league, the Legion of Boom swarmed over Peyton Manning and his receivers, limiting them to just eight points. Marshawn Lynch nabbed himself a Super Bowl touchdown as the Seahawks put up 43 points, defeating the Broncos by the third biggest margin in Super Bowl history. The combination of relentless rushing ability from Lynch and clinical secondary play from the Legion of Boom had given the Seahawks their first ever Super Bowl. Lynch finished the season as the NFL's leader in rushing touchdowns, now fully certified as a Seahawks hero. His legendary status was thanks to his on-the-field play, but his off-field antics? That's what really won some fans over. Throughout the 2013 season, Lynch had started getting fined for refusing to undertake his media obligations. After the Seahawks had managed to make it back to another Super Bowl in 2014, he dealt with the situation in in the most Marshawn Lynch possible way. Everyone knew that Lynch was a character, but this made him even more popular with the fans who even tried to raise money for his fines. Hey, I'm just here so I don't get fined, so y'all can sit here and ask me all the questions y'all want to. I'm going to answer with the same answer, so y'all can shoot if y'all please. I'm here so I won't get fined. Unfortunately though, that Super Bowl didn't provide many laughs for the Seahawks fans. With under a minute to play in the game and down by four points, Seattle found themselves at the New England Patriots one yard line. Lynch had already had 100 yards and a score on the day and had gained at least one yard on 22 of 24 attempts, meaning a second consecutive Super Bowl win was surely just one Marshawn Lynch carry away. But then one of the worst play calls in NFL history took place good Lynch was in short yardage situations. It was the second consecutive year that Lynch led the NFL in touchdowns in his fourth consecutive Pro Bowl, but this 2014 season would unfortunately mark the beginning of the end for the great running back. A dip in production and some injuries would make 2015 his last year as a Seahawk as Lynch made a shocking announcement to retire on the day of Super Bowl 50. In just six seasons as a Seahawk, retirement at the age of 28 came to a surprise to many, but his devotion to his roots meant that people would clearly understand why he made the decision. Lynch enjoyed exploring media routes of his choosing whilst also dedicating a lot of his time to mentoring kids in Oakland at Cal Berkeley. His young age always did make people think that there might be a possible return to the gridiron, and after one year on the sideline, that's exactly what he did. Having been a top draft pick, a pro bowler, and a Super Bowl winner, there was only one thing left to do to fulfill his childhood dream, play for the Oakland Raiders. Lynch signed a two-year contract with his childhood team and it was clear that beast mode still had some juice. He ran for 76 yards in his debut with the Raiders before going on to hit the 100 yard mark in a 24 to 17 win over the New York Giants later in the year. He finished with 891 yards at a respectable 4.3 yards per carry along with seven touchdowns. The second year of his contract was cut short because of injury but Lynch's stint in Oakland was the perfect way to finish up his career. It was the one thing still missing from his resume and it was awesome to see beast mode playing the silver and black. He did retire for good one year later, bringing an end to a truly remarkable running back career. He will always be remembered as the legend who ate Skittles on the sideline and triggered an earthquake with a touchdown run. But I want to know what you guys think. Where does Marshawn Lynch rank all time? I think he's at least a top 10 running back. We want to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comment section below and I will catch you guys in the next one.